Just over a week ago, the Quest 3 was officially announced, but there's still a lot of questions about what exactly it is, what it has, and what it's capable of doing. Hey, I'm Matt, and welcome to BMFER, your unofficial home for all things Quest. And today, we're doing a deep dive into the Quest 3 to give you absolutely everything you need to know about the Quest 3. Let's jump into it. Let's start at the beginning. When is the Quest 3 releasing? Reality is, we don't really know exactly when it's launching. They did say that September 27th, at Kinect, we'll be getting more information. The last time a headset was launched at Kinect, pre-orders opened the day of Kinect, and then it launched a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks later, sometime in October, which is what I expect to happen. Now, it's possible they wait until November or even early December to release, but I don't think so. I think we'll probably get a release right after it's announced at Connect with more information sometime between the beginning and the middle of October. But at this point, again, it is just a guess. Now for the fun stuff, though. Let's talk about the Quest 3 itself. When you're talking about the Quest 3 in comparison to the Quest 2, it's about 40% slimmer, and that's due to the pancake lenses. Pancake lenses are a totally different type of lens than the Quest 2 has. In fact, they're much clearer and sharper, and these lenses are about 40% sharper than the Quest 2 lenses. That's right, 40%, according to an interview that Mark Zuckerberg just did on a podcast. This alone is going to be a game changer from a size and clarity standpoint. At 40% thinner, it's actually at roughly the same weight as the Quest 2, but the biggest difference is the width of the actual headset. Because it uses pancake optics, which as I mentioned are considerably sharper and every game on Quest 3 is going to look better without anything else just based on these optics, because of that optical stack being so much thinner, the Quest 3, as you can tell in this image, is much thinner than the Quest 2. Due to that, even though it weighs approximately the same, it's sitting closer to your face. So you're getting less downward pressure on your face. Plus, the arms on the side are shorter, which means less leverage pressure on your head as well. Overall, it's going to lead to hopefully a much more comfortable experience. If you believe what people that have used it have said, it does lead to a much more comfortable experience, even though the weight is approximately the same. One question that I did see was whether the lens inserts from the Quest 2 will work on the Quest 3. Three. That's doubtful. We'll have to wait and see 100% for sure, but due to the fact that they're different lenses altogether, different shape, probably different size, it's doubtful that it'll actually allow you to use the same inserts, unfortunately, but we'll have to wait and see 100% for sure. Now, when it comes to the screen, this is a higher resolution screen than both Quest 2 and Quest Pro, apparently. So this is going to give you a better overall image. The screen, though, is not OLED, so you're not going to get those deep blacks. You're also not going to get local dimming like the Quest Pro has, so you're going to have a screen that's probably similar in lighting, or at least in contrast, as what we have with the Quest 2. Maybe a little bit better. It's going to be higher resolution. It's hard to say how it's going to look with blacks and clarity until we actually try it, but considering that the lenses are pancake lenses, which is what the Quest Pro has, and the screen is better than Quest Pro and Quest 2, my assumption is it's going to look considerably better when you look at it through those pancake lenses. It's just going to be a nice, crisp, higher resolution image on that screen. Speaking of higher resolution and the screen, a higher resolution screen doesn't mean anything if you don't have some more power behind it to give you better visuals. Well, the Quest 3 apparently has between two times and two and a half times as much graphical power than the Quest 2. Let that sink in for a second. Two times to two and a half times. That means something that's on the Quest 2 could use twice as much ability on the Quest 2. Three. In a podcast between Jason Rubin and Andrew Bosworth, Jason Rubin talked about these new abilities, this new power that's inside of this Quest 3. And he says that it is a considerable jump in actual ability and what can be done. Talking about things like bringing additional particles and just bringing in better textures and just a whole bunch of stuff. I'll put a link in the description to the podcast if you want to listen to it. They talk quite a bit about the Quest 3 and some of the upcoming games. Does come across a little bit addy, if you will, like a, an advertisement for the Quest 3 just because it's two people from Meta talking about a product. According to them, that power makes a big graphical difference. Now, it's just in theory at the moment on our end. They have obviously done testing. It is something that's going to be 
have to be enabled by developers by default. So they're actually going to have to do something to their game to make it utilize that extra power, whether it's doing something with textures or enabling additional particles or whatever it is, lighting, I don't know exactly what it'll do, but it does have to be done by the developers. It's just not going to automatically upscale everything in the game to use that power. Apparently the lenses will do that. The clarity will make it look better already just based between the quest two and the quest three. So those, those pancake lenses are going to give you more clarity, but it's when it comes to graphical power, they are going to need to do something manually to actually take those quest two games and make them better. The only game that I personally know of right now that's being developed with the quest three in mind to utilize those capabilities is Asgard's wrath Two which I'm extremely looking forward to seeing the difference between the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 version. They both run the game, but it'll be very fun to see what is included in the Quest 3. This is going to be like a showpiece, I think, for the Quest 3. So I'm looking forward to trying Asgard's Wrath 2 on the Quest 3 and seeing just how much they can pull out of this device. One cool thing to know about the podcast that was mentioned is one of the things that actually makes this device better from a power standpoint is the thermals. That's one problem with these devices. And if you've ever noticed the device gets hot, especially the Quest 1 had a little more heating problems. I actually had one that I had to send back to Oculus at the time because it would overheat and shut down. Heat dissipation is a big deal when it comes to technology. And if you can't dissipate that heat and get rid of it, then you can't utilize everything to its full power. So one reason that the Quest 2 hasn't utilized all of its potential up until now, they've had it locked at a certain power and ability point because the thermals didn't allow that to get any better. They're obviously releasing an update that's going to utilize more power, but even still, it's probably not using the chipset to the full potential. The Quest 3 has far better thermals, according to Andrew Bosworth. And one of the cool things about that is, is if you look at the headset, there's a pinstripe that runs around the outside of the headset. That is the thermal vent. So that's actually where the air from the inside of the Quest 3 is being pushed out to the outside to cool down the device. Now, this is a big deal. Thermals make a big difference. This chipset brings two to two and a half times more power to the Quest 3, but without a better thermal system, you're not going to be able to utilize all that power because it's just not going to function over a certain level. If it heats up too much, it's going to kill the headset. It could cause damage, shut it down, whatever. So they have to be careful about that. The thermals in this apparently are considerably better. And that's enough talking about heat. Going back to that podcast really quick between Jason Rubin and Boz. J Jason Rubin specifically says that it's actually a big step up for games in its ability. And he, he said specifically that the Quest 3 screens are what we wanted in the first place. The size and the form factor, it's all what we wanted. That's not necessarily a direct quote, but it's kind of the essence of what he said. Essentially saying the Quest 3 is really what we wanted out of the Quest 1 and the Quest 2. Between the screens, the form factor, the weight, specifically the weight distribution, the comfort, makes me excited to actually put this headset on and to play and to see how it functions. Here's another thing about the Quest 3 is storage. So for $499, $500, you're getting that 128 gigabyte storage size. There's currently no information about other options, although there will be other options according to Meta. No idea what they're going to be. I'm hoping it's more than 256 because with these games getting bigger and bigger, with Asgard's Wrath being such a big game, I think it's around 30 gigabytes. It would be nice to have a bigger hard drive, but there's no information on sizes and prices. If I had to guess, I would say it's 256 and it's going to either be $49 more or it's going to be $99 more. So you're either looking at 549 or 599 for the 256 is my guess. Don't quote me on that. Now we're just going to kind of go through a whole bunch of different points here, different things that have been talked about, questions that have been asked. First off, let's talk about the pass through. So the question came up, is the pass through actually better on the Quest 3 than the Quest 2? which should be obvious if you've heard anything or against the Quest Pro. But here's some things. Quest 2, black and white, grainy cameras, okay? So this is going to be a massive step up just from that. But even from the Quest Pro, the Quest Pro actually uses black and white cameras and it colorizes it with a chip, which looks okay, but it looks unnatural. And you get some kind of, when you move your head, you can kind of see where it's black and white and color on top of it. It's gotten better with some updates. Still not great. Still not a clear picture. The Quest 3 is going to be leaps and bounds ahead of both the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro when it comes to pass-through because it actually uses two, I think it's 4.3 megapixel cameras, color cameras on the outside. It uses both cameras and a depth camera or depth sensor. So you're going to get true 3D images with two cameras and a depth sensor. The depth sensor is going to be revolutionary when it comes to doing things like Guardian setup and mixed reality gaming because it's actually going to be able to tell depth, true depth, 
and bring that depth into the game itself so it can actually better map your room, things in your room, and put things in your room so it actually looks like it's where it's supposed to be, not just kind of floating in 3D space. In fact, the high-res color cameras that are on the Quest 3 are actually supposed to have 10 times more pixels than the Quest 2. I'm not sure what that comparison is with the Quest Pro, but it's 10 times more pixels than the Quest 2, so it's gonna look a lot better and make for a way better mixed reality experience. I'm not sure if it'll be as good as the Apple Vision Pro, but it'll be really good, definitely highly usable. In fact, people that have used it, that have leaked information, have said that it's easy to read your phone and computer through the pass-through more likely looking for like a video camera, like a high quality video camera, instead of like just a webcam. More like in high resolution. They're high res, so it's more like looking at an HD image than a grainy webcam or 480p image or something like that. That's what it sounds like. And what about custom headbands? Can you actually switch out the headband? I've talked about this on the channel in the past. It looked like you could, and the confirmation that Boz made on Instagram in his AMA the other day indicates that yes, you can actually take the headband off and switch it. We'll probably get a lot of third-party options. I don't know if we'll actually get first-party options this time. Boz said he, does, he didn't know in the AMA, you know, he could just be hiding that and just playing dumb, or they really aren't planning on putting out first-party options because there's so many good third-party options out there. Maybe they just want to focus on partnering with them. Who knows? But you are going to be able to swap out your headband, which is excellent, and I'm glad they didn't do away with that. Here's a fun question about the controllers. How are they tracked? Okay, so the controllers originally for the Quest 2 have the ring on the outside. That has a whole bunch of infrared LEDs on the ring that the cameras on the Quest 2 track, the sensors track on the outside, okay? Well, the Quest 3 doesn't have those rings, so how is it tracking? Well, there are still actually infrared LEDs on the controllers themselves that it uses to track. Beyond that, because they're gonna be occluded a lot of the time when your hands are over top of the controllers and pushing different buttons, because of that, it actually uses their hand tracking models to track the controllers themselves. Now, before you say it's gonna be awful because the hand tracking doesn't work perfectly, the co-founder of Beat Saber actually made a comment in reference to whether they're actually going to work properly, and he specifically said, it's good, don't worry. Another person that is from Meta made a comment saying that it passed the Elite Plus test. I don't think I would worry too much about whether the controllers are going to work properly or not. Meta knows what they're doing. I trust them when it comes to those controllers, after seeing the voodoo with the battery life in the Quest 2 controllers and how well the Quest Pro controllers track themselves with their own cameras, I'm excited to try these new controllers. Now, speaking about controllers, the Quest Pro controllers do work on the Quest 3. It was confirmed, so if you have a Quest Pro and you want to keep those tracked controllers, you can do that with your Quest 3. Otherwise, you can use the Quest 3 controllers that come with the headset. And I've also seen questions about the battery on the Quest 3 controllers. Is it rechargeable? Is it replaceable? Can you remove it? My guess, based on the images that we've seen and the past things that Meta has done, is that it's just gonna be a removable AA battery. You can obviously get a rechargeable battery and swap them out like I would do when I use my Quest more often, but my guess, based on the controller models in the images that they've shown and just what they've done in the past, is it's just gonna be a standard AA battery. No reason to do away with what they already did and had a really good battery life. Plus, it's one less thing that can fail and they have to worry about. So I would say it's probably a removable AA battery, just like in the Quest 2. Speaking of battery, what about the Quest 3 battery? Is it gonna last a long time? Boz said in his AMA that apparently the Quest 3 battery is on par with the Quest 2 when it comes to battery life. Hopefully it lasts at least as long, if not longer. Again, something that we'll be able to test when we actually get the headset in our hands. But just like with the Quest 2, you'll be able to use a battery pack if you want to extend the battery life or probably find a battery strap once they're being made by someone like Kiwi or Bobo even. A lot of options when it comes to battery life on the Quest 2. Same will be said for the Quest 3, I'm sure. Here's a question I've gotten an awful lot is the FOV. Is it a wider FOV? And unfortunately, I am sad to say it's not. It's roughly the same as the Quest 2. Because it's pancake optics, it could feel wider or it might actually be a little bit wider. Quest Pro has a wider FOV due to the pancake lenses. I don't know if that'll be the case on the Quest 2. The Quest Pro does have a different screen setup with individual screens, unlike with the Quest 2 probably has a single panel inside of it. The IPD adjustment looks to be stepless, so you can move it back and forth without having to worry about hitting those specific spots. Quest 2 had those three spots you had to line up, and if you were in between them, you were kind of out of luck. Well, now this looks to be stepless, so that's a good thing. And 
On top of that, pancake lenses make it even easier to get your eyes in the right spot because there's much less of a sweet spot. You don't have to have it dead on center to actually see clearly because those pancake optics are not Fresnel lenses. Well, let's see, we've covered the headset, the power, the lenses, the pass-through, the controllers, the battery, swapping out the strap, uh, the thermals. What else is there? If you have more questions, leave them down in the comments, please, so that I can try to find answers to them and do additional follow-up videos as we get more information. But the key is, this is going to be a significantly more powerful and more able headset than the Quest 2. Not to say the Quest 2 is not a good headset, still a great headset. And according to both the podcast that I listened to with Boz and Jason Rubin, and according to Boz and his AMA, Quest 2 is sticking around for a while and it's gonna stay on the market, unlike with Quest 1, so I wouldn't worry too much about having a Quest 2. I personally, the more I learn about it, the more excited I get, and I'm very excited to see what you think about it as well. And as we get closer to Connect, hopefully we'll get some more information, even if we have to wait until Connect, I guess it'd be okay. September's not that far away. I'm just really excited to try this out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, this is BMF VR, your unofficial home for all things Quest. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things Quest 3. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing.